GPUs are about to get a whole lot faster. Let's talk about it. Before that, if you just built or bought a new PC and you don't want to spend $200 on a Windows 11 Pro license, well, thankfully, VIP CDK Deals has just what you need, offering excellent prices on games and software. And right now, you can get a Windows 10 or 11 Pro OEM key for a great deal. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off, bringing the total to just $23 for Windows 11 and $17 for Windows 10, and you can even find great deals on products such as Office 2019. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate your new copy of Windows, just search activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you wanna learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. So it feels like we've been waiting for Battle Mage forever, as it's supposed to be our only hope against GPU pricing going into 2025 here now, as things have gotten a little bit out of hand from both Nvidia as well as AMD, and Intel on the other hand has been delivering some very, very affordable GPUs, but they did have some issues with their first generation of graphics cards, which thankfully they put a ton of work into and they've gotten a lot better, but Battle Mage is supposed to launch with all of that work done right out of the the box and be a lot faster while remaining very, very affordable. And is that going to be the case? Well, we just got a ton of leaks about Battle Mage, not only in terms of some leaked images here. As you can see, we have some ASRock GPUs, both the Steel Legend as well as the Challenger. And it looks like the Challenger has what appears to be just one 8 pin from what I can tell, which means that it could potentially drop to 225 watts, although it's probably going to be less than that. And then we do have with the Steel Legend, it looks like two 8 pins so that could be a bit of an overclocking monster and in fact the overclocking on battle mage might actually be good because on the alchemist cards they did allow you to adjust the voltage and with the new architecture as well as just much faster gpus well it might actually be worth it to do that on these battle mage cards but that's neither here nor there we'll figure that out when they launch which apparently by the way is likely to be in december i'm hearing a ton of stuff that it's going to be happening very very soon but let's take a look at some more leaks as to why you should be so excited for Battle Mage coming in just a few short weeks. And here actually, not only did we get from videocards.com, who by the way, them and WCCF Tech did post all those images I just went over, which apparently were originally posted straight to Amazon from what I understand, which is kind of insane. They've since been removed, but in this image from video cards, we do actually have some mention of the Arc B series graphics cards. And it does sound like based on everything I'm seeing that we will be starting off by the Intel Arc B 580, which according to a video from Red Gaming Tech, should be targeting roughly an RTX 4060 Ti in terms of its performance. And the B580 is just a mid-range GPU from Intel. It could get a whole lot faster than that. Now, I have seen some people suggest that maybe the higher-end Battle Mage GPUs have been canceled, but I don't think that's going to be the case. And the reason why is because, take a look here, we do actually have some shipping information about the G31, which should be the largest Battle Mage GPU from what I understand, and that GPU is gonna be absolutely monstrous. In fact, from the information I've gone over in the past, I was expecting it to be around 32XE cores once again, but clocking much higher, and then the B580 would be 20XE cores and clocking much higher. However, it sounds like, based on some new information, that the Intel Arc B580 might actually have 24XE cores once again, making it significantly faster than what I was originally expecting, as not only is that be clocking much higher than the Alchemist series, but it's also going to have a massive, massive uplift when it comes to the IPC. We'll go over that in just a second, but Intel themselves did talk quite a big game about how much improvements we would be seeing of this new XE2 architecture. But taking a look here at the rest of the specs from everything new we just learned, well, if we're talking about 24 XE cores or 3072 shaders clocked at 2.8 gigahertz, that's definitely going to be significantly faster than the Arc A770, and it should also come with 12 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 running at 19 gigabits per second on a 192 bit bus for 456 gigabytes per second, which yes, is technically lower than the A770, but it should be far more efficient and shouldn't need as much. And speaking of efficiency, it should also be more efficient than the A770, giving you much more performance at a lower TDP of 180 watts. Now there will also likely be the B750 and B770 coming out in quarter one of 2020 
with 28 and 32 XC cores respectively. And both of those should have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 running at 19 or possibly 20 gigabits per second for 608 to 640 gigabytes per second, ranging from 225 to 250 watts, bringing significantly more performance than the Intel Arc B580, which will itself be significantly faster than the Arc A770. In fact, if we take a look here at the old information that I was talking about with Battle Mage, I was expecting the B580 to be roughly A770 performance. Well, it looks like that's not gonna be the case. The B580 could be upwards of over 20% faster than the Arc A770, because although on paper, the teraflops are actually technically lower, well, I am expecting roughly a 40% IPC uplift if the information from Red Gaming Tech about it roughly targeting a 4060 Ti turns out to be true, and that would line up with the information Intel shared themselves about it being far more efficient and overall a much better architecture. In fact, that would put it at 22% faster than the A770, just behind the RTX 4060 Ti. However, the 4060 Ti is $399 for its MSRP, and this thing should be targeting 199 to 229. Now, why do I say 199? to 229 well yes possibly they could technically go higher than that but i think it would be a bad idea because the rtx 5060 will be coming out likely with 12 gigabytes of vram as well probably at 299 or maybe 329 somewhere around likely the first half of 2025 so intel probably is going to have around six months of time before they have to worry about the 5060 and the 5060 should close the gap on this card giving you similar memory similar performance but dlss for a small upcharge if Intel charges too much for this card. Now the ARC A580 was actually just $180 and technically they could sell this thing for $199 as when I did some simple math on not only what the GPU die would cost but the memory, well the GPU die in theory should cost roughly the same as the Intel Arc A580. I won't go into it, but it was a lot of complicated stuff going on there to come out to roughly a wash, at least in theory. And then the memory could potentially cost around $20 more. So if they wanted to make the same amount per GPU or not make the same amount if they really weren't making that much on the A580, which they probably weren't, well, then they could charge $199. However, if they do want to actually make some money per GPU sold, they probably would target closer to $220 or $230 for this GPU. And if it was 229 or less, that is going to be absolutely decimating everything on the market today. And is still gonna be a big problem for both Nvidia as well as AMD, even into 2025. I mean, giving you 4060 Ti levels of performance for roughly half the price and getting 50% more VRAM, as well as apparently XCSS is now in, which is by the way, their version of DLSS, over 200 titles. And this thing should actually have better ray tracing as well. In fact, it's probably gonna be significantly better than what AMD has to offer. This could be a seriously, really, really good card. If it is 199, I'm gonna be screaming from the rooftops for everybody to buy this. It's gonna be a huge upset and probably one of the best GPUs ever released. And even at 229, that is still gonna be a seriously good graphics card if it is priced that low. And I really do hope it is because that is going to be honestly the best GPU I've ever seen priced to performance from what I can recall. However, we do still have the B750 and the B770. And based on some simple math, we can expect that the B750 would be roughly 42% faster than an A770 or just behind an RTX 4070 coming in at roughly, again, half the price, 299 to 349, I would suspect. However, this should be releasing in quarter one of 2025, whereas the B580 should be releasing basically any minute now, sometime in December. And then the B770, the top end flagship GPU, should be around 63% faster than the A770, but actually be a little bit faster than the RTX 4070, probably being somewhere close to an RTX 4070 Super. But once again, coming in, and close to half the price, although on this one, if they go as low as 349, but if they go as high as 399, it won't be quite as impressive as the B750 and the B580. But regardless, these GPUs are gonna be absolutely insane. If you're thinking about buying any GPUs right now, please wait. The Intel Arc B580 could be an absolutely incredible graphics card. I will be reaching out to Intel to try and get some more information. But right now, I would say do not buy any graphics cards at all. We have the 50 series coming out 
at least according to leaks, very, very soon, likely at CES. And then we have Intel Arc launching even sooner than that. And then RDNA 4 also launching sometime next year. GPU prices are about to get a whole lot cheaper thanks to not only a bunch of new cards coming out from NVIDIA and AMD, but especially because of Battle Mage, which I think is gonna be completely upsetting the GPU market. But yeah, that's just what I think. Do you think that Battle Mage really will be launching really soon at a super good price? Or do you think they're gonna go for much higher prices than what we got for Intel Alchemist? And it's not gonna be that impressive. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.